Mike, turn your games down. Hi, everyone, to another What Are You Playing episode of Games My Mom Found. I am Mike Hubbardin, and who's What Are You Playing with me tonight? Michael Hughes back again. Dar also back. And welcome. And Star, where can people find you at? Currently, they can find me at uh, Square Milk Streams on Twitch. I'm getting back into streaming slowly but surely, so hopefully I'll have a schedule up for that soon. But, you know, you just keep an eye out. Maybe I'll just pop up randomly for the next few weeks. God, I need to get into streaming one day. We can start with Dead Rising. It <laughs> 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 yeah, well, was less than a minute. We already brought it up. Cool. All right. That's all right. Oh, and this is the What Are You Playing October episode. So I yeah, that's why I brought it up because it's October. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, this it, is a time to play spooky games. I mean, Dead Rise. I mean, okay, I do want to play Dead Rise. We'll start with that. I do want to play it one day. It's a game that I am like terrified of for no good reason. Well, the reason you gave them the reason it's time, which yeah. I mean, that's part of that game. That's I know, you know, but it's like, and it's the idea that I can fuck up and not finish it. Like, even though, like, I, or, you know, the fact that the game doesn't auto save, you have to run to the bathrooms to save. Yeah, in the or Xbox 360, the save system was really jank because there was an option called save and quit, but that would always restart your save file, and people got really confused about that. But back then, you did have multiple save slots on one save state. Now yeah. you only have three files, and you can only save once on them, which is kind of unfortunate, but it's better than being confused at least of save and quit. Why is my game gone? Yeah, you keep all your stats and everything, but it just starts you back at the beginning. That's why I was thinking like a, a level, a max level character and the OP guns. And at least then in terms of time, it's like, well, that <laughs> well, boss is dead. That's how I'm going to play. If I when I do finally play that game, I'm going to find the way to cheat through and or not really cheat, but to unlock the Mega Man Buster before I start my actual playthrough. <laughs> I can give you the exact guide how it's real simple. <laughs> I know you go in the parking lot. And you just run around back and forth with the cars, right? Well, hold on. There's many. There's a few extras. First, you got to get the key that unlocks all the doors, and then oh. you got to memorize the location of the three vehicles. So that way, you don't lose too much time when a vehicle breaks down in the middle of like two different cars, and you have to walk all the way there. So you can also <laughs> go and get speed up drinks that allow you to run faster in case that does happen. And then you have to memorize. Yeah, I'm gonna stop. You get the drink. okay. There's a lot. <laughs> I just I know my friend did it back in the day because Dead Rising is one of the early 360 games I was introduced to. Fear was the first one, and then I was in later on when my buddy bought a 360. He he got Dead Rising pretty, and I and I remember watching that on a tube TV. <laughs> oh and, god! So you couldn't read anything? Nope, we couldn't read shit. <laughs> <laughs> Nightmares. They're coming back. Uh, but but yeah. that, and that was my early experience with that game. And I've seen the whole game at this point because he would talk about the different cycle paths. He played it and I would watch it because I really liked it. And I, I bought it on 360 years later. I'm like, I'm going to beat this game. And I got uh, a couple missions in. And I just I just couldn't do it. I just stopped. Also, actually, one of the most OP weapons isn't even an unlockable. It's blue chainsaw you get from Adam. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, chainsaw. Yeah, and it normally breaks after like a hundred hits, but you can get bo- books. three books that three multiply books. it. It puts it to a th- hundred to the third power, and then it's that many hits. I don't know what and that is. They respawn every time you go into that section where you fight Adam. So you can hit, pick up like two of them, probably three of them, and those three books, and it'll carry you through three days of that game. So you'll just Damn. and and it'll take up six inventory slots, but then you never need another melee weapon. You can even just do like two or one, because even when an item's about to break, it'll start flashing. But with that, you know, when it starts flashing, it's like, oh, I still have 600 hits. So you're like, oh, I have some free time. Let me run over there and go grab another one, you know? Oh, okay. and there's even a survivor when you fight Adam who allows, he gives you like a fast travel to that environment from another one. So yeah, there's a lot of neat stuff that you can do to make it easier on yourself. You just have to know them. If you don't know them, yeah, that game is fucking much harder. One day. I, I think I'm going to try to emulate it on 360. <laughs> Yeah, like 360 version. So at least then I have save state, so I can I can feel much more confident. I think I have a dream this weekend. I was also at Portland Retro Gaming Expo. My, it was primarily for my brother in law who's in town. He's about to leave this weekend, but he he's like a big old old style technology nerd. Um, so it was like a wet dream essentially for him. <laughs> But uh, one thing I did buy was an Xbox 360 Vision camera, and I'm really excited. I want to get that set up so next time I go to stream. If I can get that working, like an, I, this is possible to an Xbox 360 like headset, that would be the dream. Let's all go back, baby. We'll talk about the old days. I, I had those, that stupid webcam too. Yeah, I've, 
I've got one. It was cheaper to buy your in the movies that came with that thing than to buy that camera separate on its own. Oh god. Yes. Yeah. I, 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 forgot about that. I actually threw away I think I threw away my copy or I just dropped it off at a goodwill you were you're in the movie because I collected everything 360 at one point. And then at, at one point, I'm just like, I don't need 10 sports games. I don't need your in the movies and all that stuff just got dropped off at Goodwill. The game's kind of fun. I I have it somewhere. I, just, I haven't been able to find it, but it, it's, it has its entertainment values. Yeah. yeah, there's been some like modern versions of that style of game. It's kind of funny to see. Oh, I was yeah. an achievement whore. That was uh, my reasoning for having it. I was, was too. It called on PS4, that's you or something? Yeah, yeah, that sounds right. Something like that. Yeah. God, it's a I, terrible I, title. <laughs> but yeah, um, at the game convention, I played a lot of weird stuff. Uh, I played, like, well, first when I got there, the first thing I did, because they have, like, an, just an arcade section, I did go and play Virtual Boy. Because uh, <laughs> they have one usually every year, and I, like, I, you know, it's the only time I get to just go play Virtual Boy, even though, you know, the risk of pink eye at a convention <laughs> is exceptionally Ooh, high. Gross. Normally, I think they have wipes nearby. They did not this year, but it had only been open for, like, an hour. So I was like, I'll take this risk. <laughs> they only, they, what's cool is they allow you to go get other games, because usually they'll just have one, like, in the, you know, but if you want others, you can go up to, like, a desk and ask, and they'll give you other ones. Uh, and I was playing the one I played for like 20 minutes was Mario Clash, which was it's really cool. It's fun to see early ideas of virtual reality. <laughs> I'll say that virtual boy isn't that bad. It just didn't. It was at the wrong time and it didn't work. I think the co- the two things that are just still wild to me is one. I don't know the thought of to put it on a desk and like trying to set up sounds awful to like because yeah. for those who don't know, virtual boy has like feet kind of like a tripod stand almost, but it's a lot smaller. And it's like, so you sit on a desk, it has to be just the right angle, just the right height, otherwise you're like, and then you still have to lean in to get it like really flushed to your eyes, so it's kind of weird. But then the other thing, and I've never experienced this, but it's like, because it's all red, which is kind of a wild, interesting choice, but probably a technological thing, I would guess. But yeah, regardless, yeah. yeah, it gives you headaches pretty bad for most people. So that's kind of the <laughs> unfortunate thing. And like, no matter, outside of that, like, yeah, you can kind of argue other things, but man... If, in in play testing, it's like yeah, a lot of our people get headaches after like two or three hours. Like nah, people don't play video games that long. And it's like oh no, oh I, no. I was gonna ask if they had like a station set up nearby where you could just sit for twenty minutes and let that wear off. <laughs> <laughs> you go up to the desk, or you like kind of sit back and you like get staff high. I, I'm I'm feeling a headache. Oh no, that's just a virtual headache. Yeah, we'll send you to the <laughs> on-site like medic, and you'll just eat some cookies. You'll feel better. <laughs> you can go buy uh, the cookies for ten dollars. Here you go. Uh, call that thing portable is so extremely generous yeah uh-huh. uh, there's some uh, really rare games on that system because i when I, I used to work uh, at fedex and i had one guy come in and he brought in his virtual boy for me to ship that he sold with a bunch of games and i was like i was just geeking out like oh this is cool i'm just packing it for him we're talking and he's just like yeah some of these are, he's like one of these games is like worth like 300 something by itself and i'm like why i'm like, why? <laughs> I'm like uh, yeah, I think like I a, at Best Buy recycled one Virtual Boy, and I was pretty sad. I was like, "Man, come on, it's probably broken, but still sad." I think like I think it was Waterworld or something. The game came out after the system was already discontinued, so they're <laughs> exceedingly rare. Oh, I don't this remember is... if it was that one or not, but one of the games. It was a Japanese RPG game of some sort. I know that. I don't remember anything else, but at least the I one that was... I was picking up, that I was holding and packing uh-huh. and Jack looking Brothers? at. Hmm? Based on. There's a uh, Jack Brothers. It's like a is it Metroidvania? No, uh, it's based on the Shin Megami Tensei where you play oh. Jack Frost and Pyro Jack. I need to someday get into that series. Besides Persona Four, <laughs> was, cut me off. <laughs> I know on purpose. I, I knew where you were going. I'm like I because I played that, but that's it. I also competed in the uh, Sega Saturn Super Bomberman tournament. <clears throat> I had kind of ideas to like play it a little bit and prep it, but I also had. A, Getting a Sega Saturn. I just didn't have time. I'm sure it's not that hard to set up a emulator for it, but I was like, just, eh. I can tell you exactly how to do it. But yeah, exactly. I was like, eh, but I just didn't have time. That was more the issue because I'm sure it wouldn't be that hard. But uh, I did not do well. It was one round, first to three, and there was ten people. They did have like the Sega. I don't know. If this, I don't think the Saturn itself was Bomberman, but they had ten. Well, they had like twenty because they had two versions of Sega Saturn Bomberman controllers, and then they also <laughs> had uh, these like Bomberman face multi taps. So it was really cool to see like all this because back then apparently you know they released all this stuff for the Sega Saturn. I'm like this is really neat. And then I also played a lot of uh the game that if you won Sega if you won the Bomberman the second round because it was for the Blockbuster World Video Game Tournament they did <laughs> for the last Blockbuster Jeez. in the U.S. or in the world which I also visited. 
but another game called Downfall, which is a really weird like game from like 2011 that I've never heard of, but it's just a it's endless runner and the screen is scrolling up and you have this little character and you just fall down. But if you hit the top of the screen or the bottom of the screen, you die. <laughs> it's an open source game on PC. It's actually really fun. I don't know a whole lot about it. I was trying to get more information because I was like, this is so weird. I've never heard of this. And I was like, I was like, was this an old game that was actually released for this console? But it wasn't, I don't think. But those were those are two cool games. I definitely recommend that. But also seeing Blockbuster. That was cool. I, I bought that's some a time and place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 hey, I mean, now could be a time. But I just want to say when I was there, I'll post it when this gets posted. But I did buy uh, this from them. A channel. So like metal poster to win all the shine oh mass effect yeah for those i can't see that aren't uh... <laughs> oh yeah i'll know when when this video gets posted i plan to like post these things that i'll talk about so people will be like oh that's what it was um but yeah it's cool like mass effect poster uh for the original because mass effect one is my favorite mass effect because i'm a weirdo and my no, part- mass effect one's good oh I, yeah my partner we ha- so there's like probably like 20 different like retro game shops that are there that are like selling games we searched like 20 of them and only at the last one we found digging through PS2 games. We found this one because nobody has this. It is <laughs> Barbie horse and rider for the PS2. It was the, I like, I can't believe how many places we went through and it's like, Oh no, they don't have it there. But then the last one's like, Oh, finally here it is. So it's a hot item is what <laughs> I'm calling that. I'm going to get that graded. Probably I'm sure with the Nana written on the bottom, it'd probably be like a PSA grade six. So you uh, specifically went looking for this Barbie game. Just yeah. Wanted. Okay. Yes. It's <laughs> my partner. My partner did, but I love him and he is from his childhood. So, I mean, I think he's just happy to have it in his. Yeah. Physically. I've downloaded the ROM. I mean, I've been tempted to download the ROM before, but that's about as far as it would go. So <laughs> I have played it. You don't, don't do it. That's all okay. I'll say. I wasn't going to, but I've been tempted just because I like play. <laughs> I, I like to collect ROMs. Yeah. I, I have, a whole collection. We can talk about that at a different time. There's any <laughs> I probably have it because I I did that a while ago. Um, I, I do it because every song I get the fear that they're going to make them all disappear. So I, I'm like, oh, I should collect them. I'm like, yeah, they're not going anywhere. Last like two things, then we're going to move on. To, they had a Miss Pac-Man anniversary thing going on. They even had oh. a panel about the history of Miss Pac-Man from like two of the original creators. Because that's, you know, been in the news. Was recently. Michael Sarah there to tell us about it? Pac-Man? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure that's a joke. And I, wait, I, I Michael Sarah. Versus the world. So, oh, that one. Okay, that's what I thought. I was like, the only Michael Sarah I know is that one. And I don't know if that's a joke about that or something else. I'm not kidding. Also, some really cool cosplays. I'm, I'm hopefully this will show up at all. There we go. I'll post that as well. Someone uh, dressed up as Boba Fett and someone else dressed up as an Iron Mandalorian. Yep, that was really cool. Bunch of Don Kong 64 imagery because I just I, love that. Dude, I do. Part of me wants to play that game just to finally do it. But I, the other part of me is like, do I really want to play that shit? For hundred, you got a hundred percent it. Yeah. Oh, you, wait, hold on. Wait, no, you don't have to hundred percent it. Why would you say those crazy words in a sentence? For a <laughs> he also knows me. That would never happen. I don't hundred percent nothing in this show, really. No, see, that's the thing. This will be the first one. You just are having so much fun. You can't stop. Yeah, um, a, pull a Kirby's Dreamland on him. He's like, you have to hundred percent it to fight the final boss. It's, it's, <sighs> you got to do it. Uh, during the Miss Pac-Man, I forgot they had a fun, um, like off-brand ones when the rights were in question. Let's see if I can get it all. I'll share it. It's called Muncher. It's terrifying. They had like a bunch of, oh, please let me show Dot Gobbler at least. I see oh, there it goes. Oh, the I don't like Dot That's Gobbler. Dot an Gobbler. ugly Mega Man thing <laughs> eating dots. It looks with yeah, being chased by ghosts. And Be glad you terrible. can't see this. Listeners. Oh, I, I will definitely share that when the day comes because it is a nightmare. And then uh, there was my favorite cosplay was um, one of the new Inkling hosts from Splatoon Three. This person killed it. It was great. So yeah, that was it. that was a lot of the overview of my day yesterday. It was a lot of fun, and it was cool to go to an event. I probably wouldn't go, wouldn't have gone if it wasn't for my brother in law. But yeah, so I'll share all that on the Discord. Okay. Time comes if anyone has like, what does it look like? I want to know. So. I mean, conventions are fun. I haven't been to, I've never been to a retro gaming convention. I've just been to comic conventions, which I'm going to one, hopefully next month. Or I'm going next month. But yeah, I, I I always want to go to a retro game when I just never got around. We don't have, there's one in Wisconsin, but I'm not driving to Milwaukee for a convention. So yeah, no, that's fair. Oh, six uh, hour drive or five hour drive. I don't care enough to do it. Yeah. Uh, an anime one we used to go to pretty regularly. It's about 45 minutes away, but obviously we haven't gone the last few years for reasons. Yeah, uh, this convention hasn't been around for two years, which obviously, obviously, respectfully makes sense. But <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to get too 
I don't want to say get too political, even though it's really not. I think we're all pretty much the same camp, but it is. It was a little spicy to me that I don't know, like a little bit. I don't know, Oregon. They went by the Oregon guidelines for masks and vaccination, which meant they didn't check any vaccination and they didn't require mask. So it's that's and then just that new strain popping off. So it's all good times. It's just, I mean, that's also unfortunately very normal for our for society in general in the U.S. Depending on what state you're in, I mean, just that's just a thing, like. As a guy who worked during the entire pandemic in retail, like, I mean, I think, I don't know if you had to or not. Hopefully you didn't. That I, I, I did. I was furloughed for some of it, but the majority of it, yeah. Okay. I, I wasn't furloughed. My store closed down, but I still worked. I just didn't mm. do a whole lot because <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot to do because it was dead for a while. But no, I mean, it, it, the, the atmosphere, what, what people, how people were towards it. And even I worked in the, assisted living with the seniors and i mean you would see like where people are like oh we don't need to wear masks as much anymore it's like we're around people who could die very easily if we get uh-huh. like put on your dinner mm-hmm. like, yeah so uh, it's it's not it's just people get i got tired of it and they just don't care anymore and it became so normal I and mean, that's a big part of it unfortunately but yeah i i mean i don't know we'll see what this new strain you never know there's that's the thing they're like it always gets popped up but also at this point i think people are so tired and desensitized that they wouldn't even test they were like unless they like have one of the major symptoms like oh i can't taste or i can't smell they're gonna be just like oh it's a flu yeah most people have gotten pretty numb to it at this point now which is unfortunately expected but. yeah and i to me the thing that holds me out and the reason i try very hard as a person who just went on a rant about going to conventions i don't want it sound like i'm hypocritical but i try not to just because i know there are people who still can't get vaccines who are immunocompromised and those are the people who all this whole time i just i think about them and my heart just breaks because i'm like god they are in hell there's nothing they can do they're at the whims of society and society's like i'm tired of it it's like fuck dude that's garbage thanks you have my boosters though i have even the most recent one so. i need the most recent one but masks weren't that bad just be- to me because i used to like wearing masks at work because then i didn't have to shave for weak sometimes because you couldn't see my face i would just be completely just bearded like and i was like just bad because i just didn't care enough and i'm like you can't see me so it's all great yeah i still have one coworker, james he's uh he's been a best buy for like six 17 years i think um and he uh he wasn't wearing a mask before work and then i saw him wearing a mask when after it opened i was like oh yeah i asked him another day i was like why do you do that he's like oh it's because i like being able to make faces and to the customer when I'm pissed at him. I'm that like, too. I'm like that that's fair. 100 percent a thing I used to do. And like you can't see me, so you don't see this this terrible look I'm giving you for how dumb what you just said to me was. It was great. Yeah. So oh and one last thing we bought. We bought a what is it? Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, the Game Boy Advance version. Oh, oh I'm nice. actually gonna play that next year. Oh, I would actually love to play that. Well, I, I'm going to play it regardless, but I've played the console version, but I'm excited to play the Game Boy one because it's a completely different game. So I'm yeah, really excited to do that. We're doing the GBA one first because that's the one that came out first. So I'm like, yeah, fuck it. I'll do, I'm will do. i going to I might do both eventually because it's me, but we'll see. It's probably my at least the remake one that was on consoles. It's probably my top three favorite cage, if not my top one. Oh, I wow. love the combat and system in it. The story was meh, but also that like. <laughs> I will say, I think I like the overall story of KH up to three more than most people. But even for me, that game, one in, the KH1 and that one kind of frustrate me in terms of story. As they get a little more convoluted, I like them more for different reasons. But man, the first two, it's like, these are kids having kid-ass issues. Where it's like, Riku, we're friends. And I'm like, God, just shut up. <laughs> shut up. Yeah, and I know. Don't. Have it, go to therapy. God. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I'm excited to play that at some point. But I'll probably okay. just emulate it. <clears throat> yeah, I mean that's the way to to do it. To be honest with you, I mean it's neat that my partner uh, they have a friend who has a, like the consoles for it, so they can still play it. Actually, so I think that'll be cool to see. But I'll definitely play it on a nice big screen with an Xbox controller. <laughs> yeah, so. I'll be playing it hopefully on a large handheld with a Steam logo on it. Hopefully, oh, if, once I get is. once I get that to fucking finally work. Uh, I, mean, I, I, my brother-in-law, he has set up ROMs for that. So, I mean, if you want any questions, I, I've been having physical technical issues where I can't get, I couldn't, I, I couldn't get it to sync it to my computer. So mm-hmm. I had to, so then I tried that. Then I'm like, okay, some guys like, well, just plug it into your hard drive. I'm like, okay, I'll plug it into my external hard drive. Well, that needs power because it's, it's a portable one, but it has to be plugged into something with a power source. So that didn't work. So finally, now I ordered a USB-C flash drive that I can plug into my computer to load ROMs and plug it into my Steam Deck, which only u- doesn't have a USB, only USB-C. Uh, that should work. If that doesn't, I have to get it. Then I have to go buy a dock. 
wild. It's it's just been like I mean I could download them on on the on the deck, but I don't want to because I I have I just want to grab all my stuff and throw it on there, I've all my vials and everything. But oh, it's just been a it's coming. Yeah, yeah. Well, what else have you been playing in the interim until then? Well, before I dive into that, Mike, is there anything you've been playing you want to mention before I go on my rant about Steam Deck? <laughs> oh, yeah, that'll probably be a while. Oh, I have all <laughs> kinds of things I've been playing. I didn't know, I know if we wanted to get into this stuff yet or not. I mean, I, that's so, what I've been doing a little bit, but I've been dominating a little bit, so please take yeah, it away. Go on about your Steam Deck. You already brought it up. Let's look okay. Into it. Uh, so I ordered a Steam Deck. I didn't think it was going to come that quickly. I was like, okay, yeah, I'll put my $5 down. Okay, I'll, I'll you know, they're like, it'll ship between September and December. Like, all right, I'll get it in November, December. That'll give me time. And all of a sudden, like a week later, they're like, you're, it was like less than two weeks. Your Steam Deck ready? I'm like, but I don't really want to spend four hundred dollars right now. <laughs> and so I said, so I'm, I'm thinking to myself, and I go to my wife. I'm like, what are you using? She's like, we got. Like, she's like, you should do it. You want it? I'm like, eh. but it's hard for me to spend that much money on myself for one item, and I didn't, I didn't want to do it. So then I got my Steam Deck, and then I bought myself a one terabyte memory card. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. I bought a uh, 512 first. I'm like, I don't want to spend 100 bucks on a memory card. And then when I got it, it wouldn't recognize on my Steam Deck, and it wouldn't recognize on my PC. The card was just bad. Mm. So then I had to return that, and I said, it's a sign. So then I bought the one terabyte one. <laughs> I like <laughs> that after that event of you being like, oh, should I buy it? It's time, like, two weeks later. It's, Valve was like, okay, you, everyone can buy them now. It's cool again. Yeah, it was funny. It was, right at, it was after, like, right after I got mine, they put that out there that you can just buy it now. And I'm like, come on, guys, I might have waited. Them. But I don't, I'm, I'm loving it. It's Unfortunately, I have not, like as I mentioned, I haven't gotten ROMs loaded on it yet. I'm working on that. Like, there was a meme that I found that was uh, Chandler from Friends where he got a new computer and talked about, and then he's like, oh, I'm using it for word processing. But in the in the, in the the meme, it's like, oh, I got a Steam Deck. What are you going to use it for? 20-year-old ROMs. I saw that meme. It made me laugh. Which is what I will be you. doing very, once I get it running, this will be my, because I play all my games on my laptop now, but the Steam Deck is it's it's got a decent battery life. It's very portable. It's very portable. It's nice. It's way bigger than the Switch Lite that we have. Like, it is a really nice system. And like playing all my all my Steam games on it is. I mean, you can play most of them. It can play a lot of stuff on Steam. And I I have a gigantic Steam library thanks to Fanatical and bundles and all sorts of random crap I buy. So it's getting me to play stuff. I haven't really played a whole lot. I beat Portal Two on it as my first Steam Deck games, I figured that was just right. Mm -hmm. Nice. And plus, Portal 2 is still great. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, my brother-in-law, he also got one recently. Uh, Before he leaves today, I'm definitely going to sit down and play with it a little bit, just because I I probably would never buy one. It's just not what I need in terms of my life. I just like sitting at a computer and playing stuff. And I see the appeal. Uh, It depends on how you live. The reason, like, for me, I... I like portability. I I didn't think I like portability, but I like portability more. And like I can throw all my ROMs on for the show, and then I can bring it with me. So why I'm doing other stuff, I can because I play too many. I play a lot of games for this show, <laughs> and sometimes it gets tough to try to work in certain the working games. And this way, I can be like, oh, I'm waiting for my wife who's running half an hour late at work. Okay, I'll just play. Like I just I got like one time I got mad. I'm like come on, I gotta get home. Like I don't want, I got things to do. And then I'm like, yeah, I'm like she's taking. I'm like you know you know you're fine. I'm sitting there just playing Portal Two in the car. I'm like I'm doing the same thing I've been doing at home. I don't care. Like, <laughs> so it, it's come in handy for that part where I can bring it with me and then I can get more game time in for the show so I don't get behind because that happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I've heard a lot of good things. The only thing I heard differently that you said was my brother in law. He mentioned that he feels like the battery life is a little, can be a little skimpy sometimes, it which could, probably depends on what you're doing and how it much. It depends on what you're doing. I also don't play a huge amount like that. I play most of it sitting in front of my computer. <laughs> <laughs> or like I played in bed. Like okay, all right. Now you've lost. Me. It's not plugged saying. in. It's just I, that. No, I know. It's just be, well. A lot of it is I play in bed. A lot of it is like when I go to sleep. Instead of watching YouTube videos for half an hour, I'll pull out my Steam Deck and play a game for half an hour, then go to bed. Yeah, that part's fun. It's, She's you know, lost the part I'm the, talking about. Okay, the computer game. The reason I'm playing in front of the computer, computer is other reasons I don't want to say on 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 here. <laughs> oh, okay. There's okay. a reason why I'm playing. It, I'm sitting in front of a computer. <laughs> So I figured you were being coy intentionally. I wasn't. Gonna yes, I it. was. <laughs> I see. I I'm awful at uh, coyness and stuff, so I will not get that. So well. I'll explain <laughs> it after we're done. But yeah, no, there's a reason. But no, I, it's just because I it's easy to but it's nice. and It's, it's very I mean, it's very easy to pause when you need to. I mean, you just hit the power button. Boom. Everything freezes like, you know, it's and it's perfect for stuff like because, you know, I might all of a sudden have to realize I have to stop. In seconds and get back to whatever else I was doing. Even so it like good in the middle of like a cutscene of a game that you normally couldn't pause a cutscene. I don't know. I haven't tried it with too much stuff yet, but I like Portal 2, I was able to pause it but, and Mega Man Legacy. I played it Mega Man Legacy. It's all I played so far. 
but hopefully I'm going to be playing. Chrono- well, I know I'll be playing Chrono Cross soon on it, but I'm hoping to play actual ROMs next week when I once I get my damn flash drive. Sleep mode is like the best invention on newer, yeah. Uh, yeah. not even newer consoles. Like the original DS had it, and it's just being able to close the DS and put it in my pocket and pick it back mm-hmm. up. Yeah, it's uh, amazing. Plus, like you have a gigantic. I mean, most people will probably have a gigantic Steam library. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's nice for that. I mean, it's it's a very nice handheld. It's something that I had no real interest in wanting, and then I just I really like it. I'm I'm really enjoying having it. I. It's just, it's a lot of fun, and I can't wait to make it my, you know, emulation machine. I mean, people are running Switch on it. I won't run Switch on it, because that's a little too, that's too new for me. I'm not comfortable when a system is still active. Yeah. So that's just one of my rules. Like, I, I, I like it when things are completely dead, where, like, I always have a rule with emulation. If I can buy it on Steam for cheap, I'll buy it on Steam and play the ROM anyway. But if it's something that you're never going to re-release, like, Eternal Darkness! I have no qualms in playing something like that that you know, I'm never gonna, you're never going to see again. Also, I'm going to take a quick 20 seconds here rant. No, <laughs> fuck Nintendo. Pay fucking the Bayonetta actors more. Pay oh, all yeah. your act- your voice actors more. It's bullshit. Fuck Nintendo. Steal all their shit. I'm saying it. I'm, it's not official view of the podcast, TM, but my view, <laughs> fuck it. Oh, I'm so mad. I ooh okay I'm good. Now. We are we are one day out from Helena Taylor saying that she got offered four thousand dollars for Bayonetta three. God, that's really, really low. Issue. Really, oh, yeah, that's very really low. low. It, she, I don't know if you guys read more. It was a they estimated that game series is worth, but for merchandise, which she also doesn't get any of, like thirty five million dollars. I was like, eh, we know you're the protagonist, but four thousand dollars. Also, I don't know the whole deal, and I hey, get the bag. But Jennifer Hale, that feels a little fucked up that you just kind of swooped in. I don't know how much they paid her for that. Probably more because she's a more prolific voice actor and yeah. they needed somebody. But it feels a little scab-esque to be like, let me just sneak in here. She does a great job, it sounds like, in the trailer. But, oh, God, I'm pissed. Don't, don't I mean, buy I can't head. fault her for taking a job. Yeah, like, I, I'm but, not. But, no, I get it. Like, they just, I wonder what the reasoning was to try to, like, jip on somebody when you, I mean, pay them whatever the going rate is. Yeah, because they probably can and get away with it because it's like, you know, backroom quiet deals and stuff. And Nintendo is stuck in the old days with a lot of things. And I'm guessing respecting, you know, artists is one of them. <laughs> oh, OK, I'm cool. All right. We can I can on. I can see it with, with Nintendo. I mean, I I'm not the biggest. I love Nintendo games, but I'm not I'm not big in Nintendo as much as I once was as a kid, unfortunately. Yeah, because I, I my biggest issue with Nintendo, which I brought up in this podcast before, is the fact that they don't things don't get cheaper. Like I want to like I want to like rebuy Breath of the Wild on Switch. I have it on Wii U, but the game came out six years ago. I'm not paying 50 bucks for it still. Like, they just let it go. Out, and like, they will not. Year two. Yeah, no, no. They just will not drop their prices on a lot of their games. And it just it irritates me because it's just like I get it. Like, but at the same time, after a while, it, it's OK to drop them to 30 bucks. Like you made your money like. Which is funny also to me because something my coworker pointed out, I was like, we were talking about some Sega game, I forget what, that I was thinking about buying. They're like, yeah, just wait till it goes on sale for Nintendo, because Sega games do go on sale. Sega yes. games, even on Switch, will come down pretty, like, at a reasonable, normal time, but... Yeah, even uh, on the 3DS, when they would they would have sales all the time for Capcom and Sega stuff. Mm-hmm, yeah. Not the first party stuff. <laughs> I do really want to play, and I think I'm going to start soon, the uh, Pac-Man remake they did i can't remember what's for pac-man like world the like 3d yeah, platform I can't remember what the stupid title is i played it a lot when i was a kid but <sighs> i sucked at it so i'm really excited to play pac-man it with nice graphics at a computer and try it and be like wow i don't suck at this that's always a fun experience i have with games <laughs> so free pack uh, everyone's gotta have a stupid clever remastered name and that's just repack I, I played it for my the show a long fucking time ago. <laughs> is it still one of the most downloaded episodes? It is, but it hasn't improved in like months. Like it 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 hit almost two thousand, and it's been stuck there for probably over a year. Yeah, it's Pac Man World. That's what it, it is. I mean, I mean, it was just one of those weird. I don't know how the hell that happened or why it happened back then. The show has had some weird things happen to it over the years. You gotta you gotta just go for it again. That's the dream. No, no not not those people <laughs> listen to this episode. So we'll make the plan of attack. Gotta play the sequel on the HD, apparently. Uh, or, hot take, let's just go play Pac-Man 2, the new adventure on SNES. I fucking love that game. Are you? God! I'm not kidding. No! It's one of the, it's one of the like, I probably had maybe a dozen Super Nintendo games back in the day, and that was one of them, and I used to play it all the time. I, it it's must fine. be a thing of the time. 
That's the only way I could justify it is you rent a game or own a game, whatever. You know, for a limited amount of time, it's all you play all weekend. So you get yeah. better at it. You learn what happens. You do it. But holy fuck, it is the, even when I was a kid, when I had no patience for it, and now as an adult, when I have no patience for it, it's so frustrating, and I hate it. Oh. It looks, I've tried it once on ROMs, and it didn't look good, and I've never touched it again. I, yeah, the short is, it's Pac-Man, he wanders around a world, and you point things out to him, and yeah. he responds to them. And half the time, it just kills him. You oh you you <laughs> tapped on a glass bottle. Sorry, it's on the ground now, and but it didn't break. But now Pac Man's gonna walk over it, slip, bonk his head, die. What's that? There's a barn door that's open. Oh, Pac Man's gonna politely close it, but then a, a hornet nest is gonna fall down. Oh, Pac Man's <laughs> dead. Try again. This time, don't let him close the door because he doesn't remember. That be, maybe he learned. Maybe oh, anyway. Sorry. <laughs> we no <laughs> none of us have played that. That's not the point of this. Let's keep you. Uh, you don't control Pac Man directly. You just kind of give him input and. Whether he decides to listen to you or not. It's kind yeah, of, sometimes he gets moody. Sometimes Pac-Man's just sad. And he doesn't want to do the thing. <laughs> Happy anniversary. You're not selling me on this, by the way. Uh, don't do it. Whatever <sighs> Mike Bill says, don't do it. Uh, what, <laughs> Michael, what have you been playing, though? Let's talk about that more before I have an aneurysm. <laughs> so I've been working more on the, the Backlog Busters Backlog Bingo card that I think I talked about back in August. I think you did too. Her, yeah, I'm pretty I sure was, I was supposed to. I don't think <laughs> I've heard about. Can I get a quick little bit of info? So, Backlog Busters do a podcast, and every year they release this bingo card. It's seven by seven squares, and each square has kind of like play a, a season in a sports game, or play a third person game, or play a licensed game, and it's just kind of incentive to get you to play through mm. your backlog. So I've been working on it since April, and as of this morning, I have two squares left, and I'll have all of them done. So, uh, some of the stuff I've been playing is I got really into Hades <laughs> for a while. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, a couple of weeks, it was pretty much all I was playing, and I beat it, like, eight times in a weekend. So I used that to tick off the square that was, like, a previous Game of the Year nominee. I think my favorite thing about Hades is I never, I don't, I, I can't think of a single person I've heard who's tried it and didn't say a similar answer. Like, yeah, so I tried it and then it sucked me in and I couldn't yeah. stop playing it for like a few weeks and now I'm free. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I, he, oh, that's how it was for him. Cause like there was one day we were talking and I think he beat the game like four times in a day. <laughs> yep. So, what you so I played a whole bunch of it when it first came out and I just was terrible at it. I made it to the final boss a couple times and the second form of them once. And then all of a sudden, just kind of clicked, and now I kind of beat it every time I play it. Yeah, I, love, I mean, I love when you like click with a roguelike, and then it's just second nature after that. Oh man, you know, there's a roguelike I'm really excited to click with that I believe some of us <laughs> have played on this podcast. Recently. So you want to get into it now? <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean that's another game you've played. That's the only reason I bring it up. <laughs> oh man, so that episode hasn't come out yet. The stars joining us from the top ten horror themed games. The t- that actually is out coming out as you are wrong because of scheduling that will be out because that's already edited Tuesday. Yeah. This will be out Thursday. Next okay. Week. Well, then you already know about it. Uh, I got starred to play Super Amazing Wagon Adventure. Who was not one of my picks, but I think it was Candy Please got us onto that the, was uh, it. It did. Xbox yeah, the indie. Live indie game. Yeah. Whatever the fuck on the 360 and then. Star made the blasphemous comment that there were no good games on there. And I said, you need to play Super Amazing Wagon Adventure. And uh, oh, boy, did you. <laughs> did did I really say there was no good games on there? I don't know. I was going to say. That's what he believes now. So. Xbox Live Indie Games is just what. Or Indie Game. Yeah. Xbox Live Community Games. That's what it was called, which was an Xbox 360 subsection of the arcade that had a lot more freeform people to upload. And there was a lot easier approval process. I think nearly 3,500 games were on it. Uh, such classics like, as I mentioned on my uh, stream, live stream. There's the word live stream. I was like, I know stream. That's the close that I talked about in depth for a little bit and watched the gameplay of. Uh, try not to fart. God, everyone knows that classic. Oh, it brings the memories back. I own that game and I've played a lot of it more than I want to remember. But, you know, you could just find such classics like that. Or Minecraft Clone 1, Minecraft Clone 2, Minecraft Clone 3. <laughs> you know, these classic games that really are lost to, you know, time and we can't just easily emulate, I think, even today. And that's the real Oh, Oh, sure you can. Oh, you can em- emulate those? I'm sure you can. You can emulate all the WiiWare stuff that was, like, you know, people act like it's lost to time. 
Like I, I just, video games stuff, all that. I have all that. All that's available. I just figured it because the Xbox, like once the Xbox 360 emulation becomes totally accessible, which is pretty cool. I think it's getting there more and more, you know, every day. But I figured it wasn't there yet. But once that became available, it would be. But yeah, no, I did play. I just keep wanting to call it like Super Happy Wagon Adventure. Can I get that name <laughs> one more time? <laughs> Super, Super amazing, amazing wagon it. adventure. And it was, yes, surprisingly solid. Previous star will eat her hat. Yeah, it was pretty good. <laughs> I it, it was surprising how quickly, how fun it was. It's probably one of my favorite games I've ever played from the indie arcade. And I'm sure I don't remember a lot of them because they were I'm basically... sure there weren't that many you played from that. Game. Oh, I think I played a good deal because a lot of them had, I think, a very common thing, if not like a requirement, was like they had like 10 minute demos. So you could just download like anyone and play it for 10 oh, minutes. Okay. But... I, yeah, I don't remember many of them. It's like a modern day shovelware equivalent almost, but at least shovelware, I think it was like good because it wanted you to go <laughs> find the company. These people are like, Hey, I made two bucks. Hell yeah. I'm going to the bar. Um, we banks to differ. On good <laughs> shovelware. Uh, but yeah, it clicks really fast. How, and like, there's just for like, these games are always really small. Like it was very rare that they were super in depth. And this one wasn't a, you know, different. It's on Steam for like three bucks. Uh, and it's really surprisingly, then I use that word very with big asterisk, surprisingly <laughs> fun. You yeah, I was surprised ways. you were saying how much you enjoyed it too. I'm like, <laughs> why? Yeah, have I, you played it, Mike? No, I, I, I did it. not. You want should. To. Yeah, I mean, at least I would look at. I it. thought so about fun. it to be honest, but I spent enough on I spent enough on Steam this past week, so I'm That's like, yeah, we'll wait. But at some point, I might I might grab it for. I feel like the only downside I could think of was, I mean, one there was maybe a little bit more of a tutorial would have been nice because it took me like two, like I think two roguelike runs before I was like, oh, I can shoot at this area because I just wasn't moving the right stick. I thought I just had to evade for a while, and then uh, the on-screen tech sometimes because like in between scenes, it's kind of like. Oregon Trail on crack, essentially. It's a good way to describe <laughs> it. As a road. Yeah. That, that, and, um, like and, yeah. Trail. Yeah. And in between each scene, which each scene, it's kind of almost, it's like that and WarioWare, actually, I think it's a really good comparison because it'll give yeah, you like a little bit. Yeah. It'll give you a little bit of a text heads up of like what's about to happen, what you need to do, but it won't tell you how to do it. And then you just have to use controls to figure out how. Yeah. Uh, if WarioWare was a side scrolling shooter. Yeah. And uh, it's pretty funny. It has nice little just moments of like aliens and weird stuff. And uh, there's some mild progression of like different cards. Yeah, it's solid. Probably the best game I've played that I can remember. I'm excited to go back and dig into the XNA game studio and uh, see some other stuff I can find because, oh boy, I'm sure there's some gems in there. Try For those who probably remember, might not remember it. Uh, I made a game with zombies in it. That's the most common, uh-huh. like one of the most popular ones I remember that everyone talked about back then, and is still pretty popular today. Has some sort of following anyway. I just played Breath of Death Seven, which the only one I ever played in the Cthulhu something. It was both made by Oh yeah, Cthulhu saves the world. Yeah, they were both made by the guys that ended up making Cosmic Star Heroin and Cthulhu saves Christmas, whatever the hell that. Which we're gonna be playing on the show in Christmas time. I wish I could remember what the. New game is that they've got coming out. It looks super red. Yeah, I can't remember either, but it does. You are right. It does look good. I've never seen Cosmic Star Heroin, but it's very good really, RPG. It, yeah, it looks artistically. I remember Cthulhu Saves the World and looking at that. I'm like, wow, that's a uh, really cool. There's an episode about it if you want to hear about it, too. But I recommend I recommend Cosmic Star Heroin all the time. Their new game is apparently called Way Madness Lies. They're yeah. cool. They're a cool studio to make good games. Anyway, I was watching your VOD of that stream, and I loved that your almost sarcastic tone when you started is like, oh, boy, I'm going to play this game. I'm told it was good. And then, like, your first run was maybe a few minutes long, and then you died. And you're like, OK, it's uh, it's not that bad. <laughs> and it's just like the more you played it, the more you liked it. Yes, got another one. <laughs> it's OK. Well, to be fair, the thing I was comparing it to was the other game on your list uh, whatever. <laughs> Um, Candy plays. Yeah, and mm. I I do not think I could play that and I would be turned in the same way. So no, it's very different. You but, uh, what you see is what you get with that, I feel. This I did not know anything going in, and I think that was a better <laughs> way to do it. Because it was I mean, I knew what you we talked about a little bit, but outside of that, I didn't know anything. So my favorite part of that stream is when you left it on a be right back and you're just playing the audio from try not to fart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh I, my god, this is I, like torture. I did like that. I um, I was really happy. I, it was just fun to do it because I was like, if somebody walks in, I don't know. I feel like the thing that was, I hate with streaming is just the lack of music and audio can be really frustrating because I never 
Like well, I you used can't to, only have so much, right? Yeah, because of copyright and that's the whole thing. Yeah. And I'm still trying to understand it myself, and that's why I'm being kind of uh, careful about it. But like, even just recently, I watched other Dead Rising streamers, which there aren't often many of, and they were playing the audio in the background just quietly, and I was like, whatever, I'm going to do it because you can't get cutscene audio. The cut, it's BGM audio, so all cutscenes and music are the same type of audio. So I, but anyway, um, but so with that when i put it on a be right back screen i used to have music that like cop uh licensed relative free music that i play and i might do that again but it's annoying when it's like oh be right back and there's just nothing it's just dead air and i was yeah. like i'll just put something up i don't know if you could see in the chat in the vod but i was like uh-huh. I, just, yeah, I was like i just thought i'll put this on so at least there's something and then if anyone <laughs> walks in they can just go be right back what the fuck is going on <laughs> oh, god that game is something else yeah, I don't. I don't really want to give try not to fart the time of day. If you're curious, go look it up. It's awful. <laughs> don't just don't. or keep an eye out. I'll probably end up somehow one day playing it on live stream because I want to. Because I owned it, and so there's a, a special basement bad part in my heart for it. But it's oh, it's God. It's something. it sounds terrible. And, yes. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, Michael, if you want to share, doesn't really else, fit spook. Doesn't really fit Spooktober, but it's still scary. I mean, that's, zone, right? that's fine. I doubt you, there's that many horror games that all three of us have played. It scares me that it exists and that someone made it. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they got a decent amount of money from it because it's. I feel like that was the one that was funny. Like you know, I feel like you need to get someone's attention in any market. It's like oh, you got to do something different, something kind of weird, or something that attracts yeah. young children. Haha, <laughs> fart jokes. <laughs> Probably. Well, I've got a couple of spook games that you will be playing, Mike. Resident Evil 3 remake, Ooh. which I really surprisingly enjoyed. I agree with this. I was really surprised when you told me how much fun you were having with this game. A- after the the bad time we had with 2 remake, which I know people, especially people that love horror games, just love that game. And I see a lot of those same people kind of shit on 3, but I think 3 is more of our speed, where it's more action and less spook. <laughs> so... Looking forward to uh, playing that in the future. And then Metroid Dread, which you've got coming up on the schedule for this season. Yes, end of the season. Another one that people super like, and another one that I'm just, man, I just don't get it. I don't get it, because I keep throwing myself at these Emmy battles over and over again, and just one hit kills, and it's not fun, and it's super frustrating. I, yeah, I was surprised uh, how much you didn't like it. Me too, because I love that series, and... But I wasn't big on Metro, uh, Samus Returns either. I don't know if it's like the jump to 3D models or something that just kind of rubs me the wrong way, but man, I did not have a good time with Dread. I really liked Metroid Samus Returns when I played it, but... It didn't, wasn't Dread pretty favorable to people? Yeah. Or my, man, yes. people love it. Like the Fire Escape podcast that I would talk about every now and then. Uh, they ranked it as their number three game of last year. And uh, yeah, it's I, I, I don't know. It's not for me, apparently. I have never played a Metroid, but I, which is you funny. Should. I should play I really Metroid like, Zero Mission. Yeah, oh, Zero yeah, Mission. Zero I was wondering, I was like, I don't know if I'd start with, but. That the GBA, just, great game. It's not really with, hard. You'll enjoy it. You can't go wrong with Super Metroid either. Yes, you can. Play Zero yeah. Mission. Great. I, that's what I love about this podcast. You get two people <laughs> who just are like, dude, don't. And now you are stuck doing nothing. Because you're like, I don't know which one to Super Metroid's I, a great game. I just don't, I think Zero Mission's a much friendlier first game. Well, but, Star... We are one for one with my game recommendations, so I've got a hundred percent satisfactory rating so far. <laughs> so, so maybe I should take Mike's advice this time. We'll see. That's what maybe I could be like the audience member and the representation and be like, listen, it, it's flavor wise. If you like Star, then you'll the like group. Star's recommendations from Mike or Michael. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, now I want to talk a little bit more about RE3. So, I mean, Mike, you I know you were enjoying it. Is you said it's way more action heavy than two was? Yeah, like I think even the original three was <laughs> leaned a little more on dodging nemesis and fighting zombies than puzzles. Yeah, it, it does. So, it's, it's more of that. And nemesis still stalks you at certain parts, but it's not for a large chunk of the game like Mr. X was in the two remake. Ugh. I found out I really hate being stalked by enemies in games. <laughs> so, I mean, I'll go more in depth in this. You'll hear later at the end of this week. But we Haunting Grounds next, oh. is the next game episode on the show, which you will be hearing, depending on if you hear this right when it comes out a couple days later. And fuck do I hate being stalked. I found out. Oh, yeah, yeah that one I really looked at. Um, yeah. It's a game. I... It was I've played through two and I never played through three, but I think hearing more and more about the action, it makes me more attracted because I would like that. Also, Jill's in it. Jill's cool. And that fuzzy old dog of a man. 
I don't yeah, know his name. Took a weird turn with Carlos. Yeah, he, they did. That mop of hair on his head. He's still a cool character. I'm excited to play three remake. It actually wasn't supposed to be on the show next season, but because you enjoyed it, I'm like, <laughs> all right, I'm going to give it a try because it's not, I wasn't expecting you to have as much fun with it as you did. Yeah, me, me neither. <laughs> I was very surprised. So it got my attention back. Like, okay. Maybe I should check this out. Also been playing. Nobody saves the world, which was the newest game from Drinkbox studios came out back in March. You play as nobody and you unlock different forms that give you different abilities. And then you can kind of mix and match the abilities and the passives that they unlock to create just overpowered combos. But the downside is that once you get something that really works for most situations, you just kind of stick with that. Yeah, that can be a downside of games that have a lot of uh, variability like that. And like the option to kind of swap through things. I do that all the time, though, in games. Yeah. Once I find what I like, I don't switch away from it. It, it kind of gives some of the dungeons modifiers that work against using set combinations or just makes them invalid. But every other situation is still going to be just fine. But it was all right. Uh, and the last game I have for the bingo card I just finished this morning is the spookiest game of all. It is Scooby-Doo Mystery Mayhem on the PS2. And if you played Luigi's Mansion, it's kind of like that because you have a book called the Tome of Doom and you use it to suck in the monsters in the stage. And that's how you fight back. Okay, it's kinda... it, can't, it can't be as fun sucking things up as it is as Luigi's Mansion, right? <sighs> it's still pretty fun. You have to actually mash on a button. God damn it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't need another game that I'm like, ooh, <laughs> hold on. Now. But it's got a there's five levels and at least three of them have like on rail segments and they are the stuff of nightmares that make even the battle toads blush. <laughs> it's like the third level has a mind guard and it's basically trial and error. You have to memorize where you need to tilt the cart to avoid obstacles and shit. And it's, Oh man. So what do you made you play this game? Hearing that you get a book that sucks in monsters. <laughs> okay. Wait, so you didn't have a history with this game? I played the other. I played some of the other two. I played Night of a Hundred Bites and some of Scooby Doo Unmasked, and they're okay. definitely fine. I know yeah, people are really I, fond of Hundred Bites. I was thinking of those ones when you mentioned this name, so when I looked it up. I was expecting to see one of those. I don't remember which. Yeah, one, but that, it's not. It's a very different. I mean, similar, but you know, definitely different game. Yeah, that's why I was curious about this one. This is the only one that I had never played, so I'm like, well, I gotta check that out. <laughs> it's the parts I liked. I really liked, but. Then <laughs> the opposite's true too. Is the, the bad stuff is real bad. You seem less angry about it. I didn't. I didn't get any angry yeah. messages about the game. Like fuck like, this game. Like uh, the fourth level, you're on the back of this like moped, and it goes on like even the world record. I pulled up a video. It starts at 13 minutes into the video, and it goes till after 17 minutes. So even world record perfect pace is still four minutes of driving the stupid moped. Dodging obstacles, trying to stay on the road or whatever. And I kept dying over and over and over. But yeah, I really didn't get super frustrated like Metroid Dread somehow. <laughs> this is basically the same thing. I just kept throwing myself out until I finally got it. Okay, well, that's good because I know Metroid Dread really upset you. Yeah, it wasn't great. You like, I plan on a good time with that game. Plan on ranking all of these backlog bingo games at some point i think people are going to be shocked at how low dread is <laughs> i'm glad you got into the back the, the backyard bingo thing because i think that's been really good for you <laughs> yeah no i mean i haven't heard about it till just now it's, it's a just, podcast yeah. oh, well me and him talk a lot it's a podcast that he listened to and then he they, they it gave him an incentive to play games that he wouldn't have played otherwise yeah that was long before i rejoined the show too so i wasn't really doing much of anything so i will post that card in the discord Better do it now before I forget. <laughs> <laughs> you can see for yourself. Listener. And then the other games I've been playing on my Steam Deck is I was that I did I was playing Mega Man Four. I played Mega Man Two, Three, and Four. Now I'm working on Five. As we speak, I think. As we speak, I'm playing Vampire Survivors so I can talk about it. Oh hell yes! So that was <laughs> the next thing I because I I forgot to play Vampire Survivors before we did this episode. And I was like, fuck, I should try this real quick. So I'm like, okay, I'll boot it up for a minute. I'll just try oh, it out. Hey, I'm, yeah. playing. I'm in my second round. I'm playing for like 15 minutes. I'm like, okay, I get it. Wow, oh, second yeah, round, it's... 15 minutes. That's not bad. Oh, I had man. a lot of time getting the numbers that high. No, I didn't make it that long. I made it like 10 minutes. My sec- I just, I've been okay. playing the game for about 15 minutes. I, I'm currently at six minutes in my second play, in my second round. Yeah. Let's see how far I get. Wait, I have, a hot, I have a hot take. Uh, it's probably more for Michael than Mike. Garlic, yay or nay? 
Oh, yay. Always Oh, yay. thank God. I have some people I read who think, like, garlic is trash. And I'm like, wow. No. You're talking about real garlic. I love real garlic. You're talking about the game. The same. I... Real life, too. Garlic, IRL. Yes. <laughs> hello. Hello. More please. But, yeah, no. Yeah, once you see garlic in the game, it's it's like a little area of effect around you. Yeah. Damage. You'll see. Okay. It's, some people just, hate it. but well, I, I had no interest in this game, but you guys were talking about it. I think in either in the top top, somewhere we were talking about, I'm like, this will be a perfect steam deck game just to throw on my deck mm-hmm. and just play when I, you know, just have it there and it doesn't involve much. Oh, it's super addicting. <laughs> it's another rogue. Like the, like once it clicks, it's, it pulls the end. Oh, I'm trying I'm to see that. I don't know. I'm wondering if the 1.0 update came out. So you're talking about a it bit. is the 20th. So it'll be four oh. days from now for us. Oh, but by no. the time, the listeners hear this, it will be active. Yeah, it should well, be there out. There you go. So great. If, yeah, if you haven't played it in a while, I'd recommend trying it again. What are, they, they're what are they adding with the 1.0? Like, a lot. Uh, <laughs> some, like, a lot just, of tweaking of stuff from what I've Yeah. Played. It's funny, though, because they've been updating this game constantly. Every couple of weeks, there's there's more weapons and more characters and all kinds of shit. And yeah, 1.0, they're going to add a whole bunch of stuff. Like They've been tweeting all October. There's every day spoilers of things they're adding to it. That's cool. Yeah, this article I'm reading, which was from the 29th, so that's probably why. Uh, but initially, they were keeping it pretty close to the chest, um, and they said that gameplay tweak, full list of additional languages, uh, a bunch of new secrets added. So, like, I think there's some stuff in the game that you have to, like, unlock by doing things. Some balancing stuff, but yeah, I'm, I'm be excited. I think, I don't remember if I heard a graphical thing. It was either, like, a small graphical, like, kind of overhaul They're or... Uh, updating some of the sprites again, I think. Yeah. Like, a lot of it's, them have been updated. It's once. a very cool little game. We really don't do a whole lot, but walk and try to not uh, die. It's it was originally a mobile game, so like okay, you sense. can see that. Yeah. But see, that's what's also perfect for the Steam Deck is because you want little games like that. But I also could play like Sleeping Dogs on here if I want to, which I will at one point. Absolutely, and I love that. Like once I get my MU Deck working on here, where I can play. Oh God, I'm never this. This thing will be in my hands all the time. <laughs> the last time we talked uh, about Vampire Survivors, I mentioned that there was a mobile game that it's pretty much seems like it was heavily inspired and relied off of. And I really wanted to shout that again. It's called Magic Survival. It's totally free. It's on mobile. I just really want to shout it out because I don't know the whole thing, but but I know Magic Survival definitely came out before Vampire Survivors. It's even like its earliest launch. So I'm kind of like, mm, maybe, maybe check that out, too, because I feel bad for whatever company that was like, damn it. And now on, uh, I mentioned too on the mar- on the Android market, fucking just clones of Vampire Survivor everywhere. Oh yeah, no, that's no surprise. Yeah, like I, the, like, uh, yeah. I think I mentioned in the top ten that during Steam Neck Fest there was one that's just identical. I was playing it, and my wife walked in. I'm like, "Hey, this check out this totally original game." She's like, uh, "Yeah, what the hell?" Because mm-hmm. this is <laughs> it's, it's Vampire Survivors, but it's all magic based stuff instead of like Castlevania themed. Yeah, the original is kind of like. The graphics are, are like limbo esque. If that kind of gives you an idea of like uh, <laughs> magic survival, okay, bro, calm down, calm down. But yeah, it has, it, it has a very unique aesthetic that's very different as well. But I like it a lot. Anyway, uh, yeah, I got so. two more real quick. I've been playing Terraria with my wife because the last update finally came out, the Labor of Love update one point four point four. It's still fantastic and one of my favorite games of all time. And then I've been playing Bowser's Inside Story because I played. Partners in time and beat it for the first time mm. for the bingo card. And yeah, Bowser's still good, too. Those are two I've really wanted to play for a long time. <sighs> like, I, I'm i going to end up playing this whole series now just because I've been having such a good time with them. Yeah, I'm, that's a series I really I've only played the first one in one of my early, early emulation days, and I've never gone back to it yet. I want to play the remake of that one. I've also tried Terraria a handful of times, and sometimes I've gotten farther than others, but I've never gotten to, like, really far in. I think even once we, like, did the world refresh once and then got to the second version. But I still haven't really far. I um, o- I played it once on 360, and I could not get into it because I didn't understand what I was doing. Yeah, uh, the tutorial's yeah. not great. It's really one you need to play co-op with someone that knows what they're doing, kind of show you the ropes. See, that's the hardship for me is I don't like... If I'm having that experience, I want to be very kind of specific and tailored. Like, I want someone to kind of show me and then let me do it a little bit. But yeah. I have one friend. I love him to death. Wesley, I don't know if you're ever going to hear this, but I love you. But <laughs> goddamn, he'll be like, no, it's okay. Let me do it. I mean, he does, like, sets up the room with the minimum requirements in two uh-huh. seconds. And I'm like, I get it. I know. He's like, it's not really important. I'm like, I know it's not, but I kind of want to mess with it a little bit. And he's like, we got stuff to do. We got to get to the end game. And I'm like, okay. But they just revealed, because they're still adding anything small things since the 1.0 and there's a there's a seed they made and released that's a 
it's upside down terraria so you start in hell and oh, hell's a lot safer but then as you go up it gets scarier and scarier i'm like that sounds fun i want to throw someone who's a pro into that you know crap yeah, that that sounds cool. yeah it seemed really neat to be like oh hell's my home and then you go to the sky and you're like oh god help I well say- that would be a fun stream for you to do if you want to some weekend we could co-op that oh be yeah down. i would be hella down for that that'd be fun but yeah the only other game i've been playing is uh pokemon arceus um, oh yeah i played it a while back i got to about where I am now, actually, which was like the first mega creature boss inspired, it, it, powered by the god. But I had to redo that all, which was kind of annoying, even because I think my cloud save it was couldn't be copied. It's so like whatever, but I did it again, and it's been uh, it's been fun because I've never really played a Pokemon game. So oh yeah, that's a uh, that's a good one to start with. It's completely different than the rest of the main. Yeah, games. and that's kind of my fear is that new one's coming out, and I know my partner's gonna get on Switch, so I'll probably try it. But I don't think I'm gonna really like it because I like Arceus for why it's different a lot, uh-huh. and I've I've tried to play him occasionally in the past. I the one I spent the most time with was Red, like a few years ago. And oh jeez, it's hard to go back to. Yeah, I've never played <laughs> the other ones though, so it wasn't that bad. The only problem I had was I speed ran intentionally getting a Gyarados, so I don't. Even, I think I was at like the a boat i had to get on a boat really early on and i had a gyarados so i was just hyper beaming everything to death and i was like <laughs> no you played it right you you bought you probably bought magic card from the salesman guy in the pokemon center and then yeah but then it wasn't fun anymore because i'm just oh, like Red oh. is, i love the original next uh, first gen but then again it's all nostalgic for me too yeah at that point i was just like i'm just hyper beaming everything to death why would i catch anything and i know i need to but i was like i don't want to and so now oh god i love just being like hey i want to catch that caterpie done moving on (laughs) to the next thing uh so yeah rc has been really cool i like it a lot for all its differences i'm sure most people have that care have tried it or felt it out but yeah i I haven't yet i want to oh i'm real i don't get the stuff till years later (laughs) yeah i will be interested to see uh, you know as you as a pokemon fan you about it because i am not a pokemon fan i love it it's still a little grindy like the I, the big reason I'm really attracted to this one and something that I it's probably shows a little bit my style of things is I am really excited to catch shinies and uh-huh. if sounds okay. like you want to catch shinies this is the game to do it because yep. yeah if you Michael if you want to talk about it you might know. oh yeah they they up the the rates big time in that one plus you're not finding them one at a time so the more spawns that happen the more chance you have of finding one uh, and the end game you get like swarms of one type of Pokemon. So if you're like, oh, I really want a shiny Machop. Oh, there's a Machop swarm? Let me go catch 20 Machop real fast just chucking Pokeballs around. It, and then there, there's also another hidden thing that because of the Pokedex, you have to like do certain things for each Pokemon to like get it. And if you max a Pokedex on a Pokemon, which you don't need to do because after like doing 10 of the things, it's like cool. But if you do all like 40 of them, it increases the shiny chance by like a few more percent. That's in cool. Hidden stat. Yeah, it's all the stuff that I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So I can actually go kind of really go for a shiny if I want a shiny, not just let me go to where it spawns. Let me walk around for eight hours and hope one maybe pops up. I never I never got into shiny. Well, actually, I have not played a lot of Pokemon games. I played the first three gens, and I never really have gotten past that yet. I did play Sun and Moon or Sun, one of them once, but I haven't touched XY Platinum really. Well, I played Platinum once, but I, I, I'm missing so many of the gens I need to get back to. I it's on my list. The ability to give someone a shiny sounds really exciting to me. So mm-hmm. I'm really hopeful that that's, I think, something that's really pushing me to keep playing is I want to get to this point of where I can ask someone who I really care about. Like, I've asked my partner and the person who I'm borrowing the game from. I ask them just casually, like, oh, what are some of your favorite Pokemon? And I'm going to try to get a shiny of that one. I'm like, here you go. Thanks for letting me borrow the game. Have it, In, that uh, one's yours. When uh, blah, 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 Mega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire came out, and both my wife and I always get, you know, both versions of it. And I caught her a shiny Feebas, and when I traded it to her with the whatever the scale is that it needs to evolve, she got a, a shiny mel- melodic, melodic. Oh. oh, I know what you're talking about. So I only know that because of Pokemon. By it, so that is, Pokemon Go. That is a good thinking that you have, Star. Oh, yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> I think it'll be fun. I think that's a lot of stuff I'm playing. I mentioned Dead Rising, which I, we talked about, but I have also been playing. It. Man, I, as soon after we talked about it, actually, after I watched your stream the other day, I went into my Steam library to see if I owned it because I fully intend to install it and play it, but I do not own it. So I'm hoping that it goes on sale during the Halloween sale in a week yes. or two. Oh, there's another God. sale coming? Uh, well, there's <laughs> always another sale coming. I know. I buy so much shit on Steam. And now that I have a Steam Deck, I'm like, hmm, I can buy this, 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 this. Oh, God, yeah, I'm sure, I bet, I think it's like 30 bucks, I'm sure it'll be like 5, 10 bucks for yeah. 
that yeah right it's, it's been on sale before really cheap i've I did I install it. two but i haven't played it yet yeah i have actually i think i beat i went back and i played through like all of two i haven't done it on the rising one because i keep booting it up and then i stop because i want to play it on the stream but i have played all of dead rising two privately i really um, want to play one again it's been i want to play two more than i want to play one because two <laughs> feels like it's much it'll be easier to play it still blows my mind that just when i play two it just feels like i'm walking through like a ball pit but one it's just like once you're at a higher level and you can move faster it feels smooth and like oh yeah i'm going where i want but the way just Chuck lumbers around, I don't know. And I think, yeah, I don't know. That's it. That's it. We don't need to go down this island okay. right today. It's too Same for the episode. Yeah, we will cover. I mean, it's, I'm, it's one of those games I will get around to because I, I I have certain games that I'm like, I need to cover this, this, this someday. Like, it just, it just, it just depends. I never know what's going to happen on this show. Uh, I'm going to call my shot now. If I'm not here for that episode, I'm dead or something horrible has happened and <laughs> I've become a bad person. So at that point, just forget about me. I'll I reach out to be... 100% when we get there. <laughs> I will... I will riot. I will go to the Discord and I will scream until someone will be like, let her on. <laughs> She's not going to stop. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll get you on when, whenever, uh, that, whenever I finally convince myself to play it. Don't worry. Listen, if you ever want to do a fun, weird thing, I will just play it for you. I don't know. I don't know. I'm up I, for alternatives. I beat example. every game in this show except for three, technically, and I considered one of them <laughs> close enough because I got to the yeah. end boss and the game glitched on me, so close so enough. Whatever. No, so Reaver 2, I couldn't even play at all. It was Blood Omen 2, your favorite game. Uh, but it, I knew it was one of those stupid games. Yeah, and then I couldn't... And then Beautiful Joe, which I didn't have emulation at the time, I couldn't finish, but one day I'm going back to it. Yeah, I mean, even with like as a small teaser, for again, to bring up, like, there are three mini Uzis in that game that do a fuck ton of damage, are free right off the bat, and they don't spawn again until you, you lose them. But they are in hidden spots. One's in, like, a fountain. One's on top of a, like, building. In the food court? Yeah, in the food court. And then the other yeah. one is above, like, the main hallway to the entrance. So you have to, like, go up a stairwell, then go double back to. But, like, yeah, if you don't know those exist, God, I don't even want to use them when I play. Because I'm like, they're too OP. I don't want to use it. But, like, for anyone else, it's like, yeah, no, go pick that up and use it because it's stupid. And if you don't have someone to tell you that or you, you know, you could Google where to find good weapons and it'll pop up. But if you don't have that thought, you're like, fuck, you know. Anyway. One uh, day. <laughs> one day I'm going to do it. It just, I don't know. Why. I kind of want to play three again. I only played it once after I got my Xbox One. That's, that's on Steam, isn't it? Yeah, it's on yeah. Steam. I, I, I have an Xbox One, Mike, but I have but it don't work, so Oh I have it through oh I no, I just own it. Oh, that tells you how I feel about that game. <laughs> Whoop. Playtime nine hours. Yeah. Oh, I'm looking at some of these images. It was, it was a V line. Yikes. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what I hated. They like they like also downplayed survivors in that or uh not survivors, uh Psycho Yeah, you yeah, they made the, like the seven psycho- deadly sins. Yeah, and it's really, I don't know, like, as I'm seeing, there looks like a very transphobic character in, like, a GIF. And it's like, yeah, well. they did this stuff with three <laughs> as they went on, and it's like, it's like you're trying to capture what was the spirit of this game, and I don't think is anymore. And one, I think, has some small things, but three, like, just cranks it up, and so it's like, oh, this is problematic a lot, rather than, oh, this isn't really great. The, even the first game has, like, uh, iffy stuff. Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's like what I'm saying. Top. Yeah, the uh, cop. The <laughs> cop. Yeah, the cop's not great. And then I've also mentioned last that was a, there's a character who clearly seems to have some sort of mental disability. And, the, uh, yeah. like a path the Vietnam and, veteran. With him and another character later on. They're like two, a very late. Two's game. got the the tiger tamer. Who's a him too? Yeah, he's yeah. in two. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what. I, uh, certainly, I think doing something like that today would be very not great. So the fact uh-huh. that it happened back then is pretty wild. Although mm-hmm. I haven't seen. The psychopath in three, I did not know who is quite interesting. It's a cop. Anyway, we never mind. That's <laughs> okay. Fine. I it, I know a lot about Dead Rising One for a guy that's never actually played it very far. I know a lot about it. I watched that's why it I think ton. there might be one psychopath you haven't seen, but they are actually required to beat the main story. Oh, also, I've seen the I main story playthrough. What? Okay, then do you know the very important thing? Which I will mention just before we move on. When you go to the main story, uh, the very last thing you have to do is be in a room at a certain time. And if you aren't in that room, you will not. It will. The game will end, and you will get a bad ending. So be aware of that. Make sure you look that up. Like well, how, I'll be playing with a guide. I mean, yeah, I do okay, it because so. it's really that was really stupid. That I always thought that's stupid. It's like it's not very clear that you're supposed to be there. I don't think she's like meet me back here by then. I think she's like yeah, check in on me if you want. And so if you just dip, you're like, well, I'm leaving the mall, I guess. You just die, and then it's like bad ending B. 
And you're like, what the fuck? No, it's like, no, you had to go hang out with Isabella until 4 a.m. Then you can leave. <laughs> oh, anyway. <laughs> Do we have any time to talk about shows? Because there's one. Yeah, we always got to get the shows. Mm-hmm. That's part of the. I actually, wait, I'm trying to think of the other games. Oh, I haven't played Diablo Immortal anymore because I fell off it and I, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, that's probably, I mean, that's just the, the lifespan of mobile games. Eventually they stop. Oh, I have been watching one show I want to mention. I'm not sure if you've been watching The Star, but I've been watching, I watched The Dahmer Show. I finished it last night. And okay. It, God. It's fucked up. I mean, most of it, not everything is true, but a lot of it is true. There's a main thing I want to get into, but I'll talk about everything else first. Um, okay. Because it just became especially stupid in the last two episodes. But yeah, no, it's definitely, it's gratuitous and some parts unnecessary. I don't, it's interesting. I don't know how much, like, it's weird that they wanted to tell this story, but also make it a story, but not. Like, a lot of it's pretty accurate, but there's a lot of stuff that's very not. Like, and there's no real record to suggest that there's any truth to it. Like, there is a scene. I can um, tell you what's what's not. Blood warning. It's very bloody and gross. Um, where Jeffrey Dahmer for a little bit worked at a blood clinic. Um, That's true. Yeah, that is true. And there's a scene where he takes a blood bag home and drinks blood from it, the bag, and like it drips all over him and goes down his like naked chest. That is not true. Yeah, and he I tried thought, it on the roof. Yeah, and, and didn't he like it. it. Like, he never. And that was it. Yeah, and I don't know why the show would take such artistic choices like that when it's like but a lot of it's accurate another thing that was really big change was the cops getting awards that yeah. never happened they still got no, they did, cop did, benefits of like they oh did, they just went they on got leave. money back so they got fired and they got all the back pay yeah and then they got rehired later as cops which you know that's not surprising but the fact that the show is also like they got awarded and that i think they want to really just reinforce this narrative of like you know cops back then could get away with a lot and they got like there was less consequence for them which is fine but it's weird that they did that in certain ways with things that were true. Excuse me. I think it was more to really push how much the police to bring that narrative that the police fucked up in this case. Yeah, but because they, I, I mean, I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Like I, mm-hmm. I was I'm born in 87. So I was a kid. I was little when this happened, but I've heard things years oh, wow. later and like, oh, they they fucked up bad. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, all this stuff where he was involved with the police like the, Yeah, he was very they knew who he was and everything because they dealt with him, but they never like the time when they bring the kid back, which well, I don't think was really mentioned in the show, because there's a kid that escapes and they bring him back, which is that's all real. The only part that wasn't in the in the show is that he had a drill in his head already, a hole in his head from where he already had had tried to almost kill him when the when it had happened. And the other thing they also didn't show is that if they would have went in the bedroom, there was a dead body in the bedroom at the time. Yeah, in the so I think they showed it through a blood stain or something. But yeah, but also, the actual body was there at the time because he didn't get around to it. Yeah, they didn't talk about it like at the scene, but they, Dahmer did do the drilling in the ep, in the show before it. But yeah, the fact that it somehow was never brought up and the fact that cops saw that that's got and I I do also love the highlight of the very homophobic times of what it was because I'm sure that's also very accurate. That's also a lot of unfortunately yeah. justification of like oh well. It's gay stuff, so I'm not going to get it. Also, whatever. Milwaukee, this is completely true, is heavily segregated still. To, I mean, maybe yeah. not as much today. I can't say I don't live there anymore. But when I grew up, I was born in 87. So I grew up in the 90s, 2000s. It was heavily segregated Ooh, still. Like, I mean, no, I mean, you didn't have like legally segregated stuff. But I mean, like the way that people were like the north side of Milwaukee, where he was living, he was living the north side where he was living was you had areas of that city that are very much one race, period. Like, that's just how that city is. Like, you go to the north side of Milwaukee, everybody's black. And, like, and I, you know, and it's just, it's weird to me as I live in, I live in Minneapolis, St. Paul area now, and it's like, this city was much more, like, you know, divided and things were different. It wasn't, Milwaukee was very much segregated. It's just, that's the way the city is. It's not, that's, it's not a good place. That's gentrification and culture for you, because, yeah. Yeah, and, and, um, and that was very true in the 90s. Like, you look at all that stuff they show, like how the police, you know, kind of avoid, don't really care, aren't taking anything seriously. All that was true because just the city itself, it's just they didn't care. They still, I mean, it's still a problem the city has. Like, I think there was a shooting not too long ago, maybe a couple of years ago, where a cop shot a black guy or something. And it was a big thing in the Milwaukee area, but it happens all the time. Like, it's just not a, it's, it had a lot of issues. And then the second, last thing I can think of that isn't super big, the, not the big thing I want to talk about, but uh, the, I don't like the backdoor pilot for fucking John Wayne Gacy. That was so unnecessary. It also was not true. 
the yeah, it's I just it didn't need to happen. They could have talked about that character. They could have even had the scene where you know I didn't think of it as a backdoor pilot. You think? Oh, that what it is? I a hundred percent did showing uh, basically this murder in the way that they did it with Dahmer because that's also basically the intro of Dahmer, except he actually you know murders him. He's one of his uh, John Wayne Gacy's victims. That's and the fact that I just can see that they want to. I could imagine them being like, if people like this. And it goes really well. We have an actor picked uh, out who's willing to play John Wayne Gacy, and we can do a whole other series about John yeah, Wayne Gacy. Okay, I didn't see it that way. I mean, Gacy did die, was executed the same day he was baptized, and Gacy was mentioned because Gacy's one of the first uh, serial killers. Yeah, like, I think all of that could have been done without having a, a whole scene devoted. Yeah, you didn't need, because the, the kid that you see him torture and, and then for that little brief thing that that's the guy that get that, how they end up catching him in the end. That's even, I I know more than I, I know a lot about this. My partner is also very into true crime. So I know a little bit, but that's even more funny and why it makes me, I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be Rob Peast, which is the last person that he kidnaps and then kills, which is what led to him getting captured because his, he was, he got sloppy and he, he was the last person seen with this guy, had him get in his car, took him home and then killed him. And then they're like, well, he was talking to you. No, he wasn't. Like, you have witnesses, you idiot. Like, why are you... Yeah, he just... He was very confident. That he was like, I can just do whatever. And again, that goes back to the sort of the theme of the show. But that makes he's me... He's a lot... In my opinion, he's worse than Dahmer. That maybe makes me even think of more as a backdoor pilot. Because literally, the ep- the first scene of Dahmer, the first, like, half episode, if not full episode, is showing his last attempted victim. And the yeah. first scene they show of Gacy is his last victim. And it's like, yeah, it really feels like... Anyway, but the okay, that's a good that point. Was, I didn't think about that, but I I wouldn't be surprised because this show really like blew up and there's a bunch. I I'm thinking that something must have happened with the rights to, or something with Dahmer because there's other documentaries and other shows like Tubi had something about Dahmer on there. There was they they were doing the real life story of Dahmer. Like something it something must have happened that made them like all of a sudden get real excited to bring it back. I know thirty years it's just blowing up, and that's kind of the thing that's bothering me. And it's weird. The last two episodes talk a little bit about the experience of the victims after Dahmer and talking about the struggles they face. And it feels so tone deaf and unclear to have this whole, do- this whole series, very artistic series, which is already a big thing of like, wow, it's really artsy how much you're putting into these scenes and making them feel very, you know, potentially triggering. And then mm-hmm. go, but also Vic- the, you know, the families of the victims ha- struggled so much with all this after and the public response and public attention they got that none of them want. And then have all the- these families today say, yeah, hey, I wasn't talked to about any of this. It's something saying I don't want money, but like I kind of wish someone had said, hey, can we use your rights or it's I don't want because know. it's so many years. I don't think they had to. The point is, it feels it's very right, tone but... deaf to, yeah, to be like, oh, wow, they really go through a lot of shit when it's popular. And then they make this whole series, and now it's popular again. And, like, there was one episode I missed because I fell asleep because I was really tired of my part of watching it. But apparently it's, you know, when they talked about, like, and then it came up later. So, like, Halloween costumes. And now there's discourse about Jeffrey, Jeffrey Dahmer doing him for Halloween and not. And it's just, it feels very, like, we're just repeating the cycle. But in the show, to spend, like, one to two episodes talking about that cycle... It's I was so upset, like up to it. I was like, OK, maybe it's not really aware. But those jobs, it's like, Elsewhere. it feels like, you know, what will come of this and you're doing it anyway. And you're like, eh, we it's fine, though. We get a pass because we're acknowledging it. It's like, I don't know. I hated that. that OK, is- now I can get that. Then you. Yeah. If they make a Gacy. So it's going to be even worse then because exactly. He killed, yeah. He killed and 30 some people. So I just I feel really bad for the so, families. That's I mean, at least with. Like with Dahmer, he admitted that he fucked up. He never felt remorse, but at least he admitted he's like, yeah, I, I, I screwed up. I should be killed for what I did. Gacy's like, I didn't do it. I don't know how those bodies. I didn't do it. Yeah, Gacy is a whole. Yeah, he's he's bad. Worms. He's worse in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, but yeah. So besides that, like, <laughs> sorry, Edmund, Michael. Sorry. Yeah, no, I think <laughs> I'm ready to move on. Least, uh, I'm still it. here. It's, it's an <laughs> okay show, but I don't think it should have been made. That's where I'm at. Uh, the other show that I've been watching that I want to mention real fast, which is, I, I hasn't finished yet. I've been watching Andor, the Star Wars show. It's pretty good. It's only, I think, six episodes. I haven't watched the last episode yet because I didn't realize it and I'm behind, but it's pretty cool. I, I recommend how often it. <laughs> how Star Wars stuff is always so polarized. It's like, oh, it's really good or it's really shit. There's really no in between. No, I yeah. mean, it's, it's also a show that has nothing to do with Jedi so far, and I, it shouldn't have any Jedi, any lightsabers. It's just rebels. Essentially, people starting the rebel, the rebellion, fighting Imperials is really, and it's it's pretty much a heist show, is what this first season seems to be. It, it's oh, not. 
It's pretty good. I mean, for if you don't care about Star Wars, it's something that you can enjoy more because it isn't it isn't focused on you know Jedi's and all the other stuff. It's just focused on guy some guy trying essentially trying to survive, who's wanted by the by the you know by the Imperials because he stole stuff and he killed people by accident when they attacked him at a bar and now they're after him. It, it, but it's it's I'm it's it's based on it's on a character that's in Rogue One. Spoiler: They don't make out a Rogue One because they can't. Because it, yeah. it's a prequel that takes that they can't be around for the other movies. Mm-hmm. So, but it's going to be two seasons of the show, I think. But no, the first season is really good, and the shows have been kind of mixed. Obi Wan's all right. Book of Boba Fett was bad. Mandalorian was amazing. So it's kind of in that middle. But it's 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 definitely good. Yeah, it's I I am not super into Star Wars. I think I've only seen one of the newest three series or three Me movie too. series. <laughs> you don't need to see those three, the the new movies. Just well, watch the original three, and then you're good. But it's always fun. Uh, excuse you, original six. Uh, I will. I still need to go back and watch. So I I try to watch. are and eh, Phantom Menace is fine. The rest are bad. I I tried to I think in terms of like this nostalgia idea, I tried to go back and watch uh, the Andrew Garfield Spider Man. Because I'd never seen them, and I was like, I'm curious if these are good, and I could not finish the first one. And I'm like, no, I I'm love scared. the first one. I hated it. That little, oh, that it's like it's, oh, I, it's like 2012. I'm trying to be cool, but I'm not. And also, then like he feels really responsible for his grandpa's death because it's Spider Man. But I'm like, I don't really think that's on you. You left, and he chased you down. That's kind of his. Like, dude, chill out. I don't know. It felt just hard. I think oh, without any his nostalgia. Uncle, gosh, huh? It's his uncle. Oh, God, ben? sorry. Let me do a hair flip in dramatic <laughs> response, which would be appropriate for that movie. Oh, I liked I We were read that movie for the show. So um, our review. I now yeah, watch that's true. I'm I probably would watch the review of the second one before watching the second one, because I've heard the second one's even worse. The second one's garbage. First one's yeah. good. Second if I didn't like garbage. the first one, I'm, I'm not going to go to that second one. Be like, yeah, this would be good. Um, it's a terrible but it's movie. In, but it's interesting to hear, you know people talk, i like hearing people talk about star wars and like how it's going because i think you know disney for the almost medium you know giant heading towards monopoly it wants to be has, it's interesting to hear like how they handle that and how it's going and what eh, people, they haven't handled it perfectly they're kind of getting the hang of it now but yeah, they okay didn't handle that. it good. that's all right something that was brought up at the con and i think it's kind of prevalent and something i kind of want to post to you guys we walked past booth and i heard a lot of people talking about it i think it's a, a kind of interesting question is like the question was just do you consider World of Warcraft to be a retro game? And there was a yes and a no, and people could come by and put one little, like, bean in one or the other. And my partner and I had a pretty good discussion about it, because I think it's an interesting thought of, like, you know, can something that's still ongoing in that way be retro, especially with games? Yes. Like, I would uh, say it's retro because it is so old. I mean, yes, they've, yeah. you know, patched it and made expansions, but the game, the ar- the archaic type of the game is still old. Yeah, that's kind of how I felt. I was like, the, especially for the genre, you know, being one of the early Titans and it's still around and it's been updated, but like, it's not really like great. It's not the most beloved thing, even though there's not many in that genre that are still prevalent. It's still pretty archaic in ways that a lot of others have improved or gotten better, you know, even, you know, Guild Wars 2, that'd be another one. It's like, yeah, it's pretty oh. retro at this point, sadly, you know, but I like that game. Never I do. I, I've never it. played it enough because I don't like it, most, but I do like it. And those are bad. In my opinion, <laughs> just because of what they can, I I have a I can't go back to MMOs. I played FF11 way too much in my life at one point. Eleven? Oh, I played so much, and that's a tough game to play. Like that game is very archaic. Like you, everything was party based. Yeah, you could you could die and just lose levels. Like you, it was what? Yeah, you would die and lose experience ten percent. But if you leveled up, you could you could de level, and then all of a sudden you couldn't wear your equipment. Oh my. That's dumb. God, mm-hmm. that's, oh, that's terrible! Horrible and, for an MMO. Yeah, oh, it was. There were a lot of bad things about Eleven. I put so many hours into that game, and I have never. <laughs> my friend is always trying to get me to play fourteen, and I'm just like, no. I I think I think about it every so often. I'm like, but I'm just like, can't I can't go back to an MMO because well, one podcast, but also I just don't want to. Yeah, it's probably fair. I've dabbled in fourteen. It's all right again. As I, like, I want to play the story. I want to play through just a single player campaign, which you can single player. There's so much tech. There's so much dialogue, even in just the story. And like, I don't know when I was trying it, I was really trying to process it. I just felt kidding. Like, I don't People know. speed run it. I know met a guy and interviewed him on the show. Chris Tenarium, who speed runs 14 every so often. I see. That sounds fun. That sounds enjoyable. Too. I mean, that's what I would end up doing essentially without really speed run, but it would be close to it. I would just be running through it. 
Yeah. The HP um, runs the main campaign of Shadowbringer, I think, is, or whatever the first, whatever the Realm Reborn, he, he runs that. So, yeah. It's yeah, like only, 14 hours. The only if other Marvel thing, Heroes was still live, I'm sure I would be still be putting a stupid amount of time into it. See, now that's one I've heard never played, but I respect. You but never I can. Would, I would dabble. Yeah, you know, it's gone fun. forever. We just made Mike, we just, Mike just made Mike sad. Yeah, I made myself sad. <laughs> I missed that game. It was Mike so sad. good. The only two other things I've been watching is one, Code Lyoko. I was curious if oh, Evie nice. had any feelings. Yeah, okay, I'm cool. I'm happy someone knows I watched it, it, when I, it was when it was on Cartoon Network back in the day. So I, that's how I watched it. And holy hell, there is so many. So There's four seasons of that show. And I've Jesus. probably seen one between three of the seasons. Because the fourth season is so artistically different. I haven't even gotten there yet, but I've seen images. That they never showed it on Cartoon Network. There's so much overarching plot that, you know, as a serial show, they just want to show every now and then. They couldn't show some of those episodes because they're like, oh, you know. But like, yeah, I never knew. Like, I think I saw the Aelita being ver- turned into a human once uh-huh. that I never saw. So getting to watch through on Netflix has been wild because it's like, (laughs) you know, a lot of it's the same. And you get like, oh, it's an episode where nothing super dramatic is happening. And it's, oh, they beat him. We'll be. It also is a show gave me my first phobia, which was floating up into the sky. That terrified (laughs) me for years. I could not look directly up at the sky uh, until I was like 18 because I just had this fear that that. I just think it's. Funny, that was a, a random cartoon that did it to you. Yeah, I hated it. It seemed terrifying. I would be I sometimes I would be in locations and look around and go. If I were to, maybe I should go into that awning because what if gravity reverses right now? And it's like, what am I going to do? <laughs> Hang out for the rest of my life? I'm like, I guess I'll get a few more hours. But that blood would rush my head. It's stupid. Anyway, but yeah, that's actually been pretty solid for nostalgia. I can't imagine anyone. There's better things to go watch. But like as me and my partner both are like, oh, yeah, we've never seen it. So we started watching it all the way through and we're three or four seasons through and I do want to finish it. But man, it's it goes some weird places for what it is. <laughs> And then Cyberpunk, which is probably worth a, a oh, lot more discussion. It. But I'm like, I haven't finished it yet. <laughs> I haven't watched it. At all. I keep forgetting about it. I want to watch it. It's really, really good. It's That's one of the best anime I've ever seen. And it I, saved a game series. So I actually beat the game. So I wonder if I'm going to get any reference in it. Oh, you will. You will. Awesome. And if you start up the game again, there's like two or th- there's a few things i don't know how many because i've avoided it but where it actually references the anime they updated that's it cool. after the anime came out to include some like that probably box. helped make the game bigger too because i know that anime like boosted the game big time so exactly time. yeah like it has more concurrent players than it did ever well, it's running better now right too like they fixed all yeah they've stuff? done all the updates since they've done that before this show came out and okay. you know people have been like hey you should go back and play it because it's worth it and i plan <laughs> to but also if you plan to play it don't as a heads up for anyone don't do it until you finish the anime because there are major spoilers for the anime that you can oh. find pretty early on um in that game uh, unintentionally so but they do have a lot of like references they have like some of the scenes take place in similar locations it's not super there though like they don't because it's a prequel to the game you know, I don't even think there's characters. I don't think any characters from the game, except like oh. maybe a few in the show, which is really nice because it's basically standing on its own two legs and doing. Yeah, things. which is good. It's really good. Uh, music's by Akira Yamoka, who did uh, most prominently the Silent Hill game music. And she's just an amazing fucking writer for music. I love her. So this music is slap a uh, full through and through. And yeah, it's a uh, really solid. I like it a lot. And I'm not usually the most into anime. So like. I would definitely, if you're curious at all, check it out. It's pretty fun. Okay. And I do have one last thing I want us to go out on. Uh, Mike, you any, any shows you want to mention that don't involve green? Uh, no. Okay. Green? <laughs> oh, Star, have you watched She-Hulk? Oh, no. No. Okay. I, have. I haven't I either, but Mike, if you wanted, I was thinking, we, I was hoping maybe two of you had, but I have been meaning to. But if you want to talk about She-Hulk a little bit, yeah, Mike, I know I'm you've not been gonna, it. I will get to it until we finished it. Well, it finished this week as of this recording, and, uh, it's really fun. It's a nice light show compared to the rest of the MCU. And that's why I like the, the Ant-Man movies. So, uh, yeah, check it out. It's it's a lot of fun. I want to watch it. I've just been I don't know why I haven't like the Marvel shows. Like when they first started, I was like, OK, I got to watch them every week. So I don't get and I'm like, I don't care anymore. I just watch them when they're finished. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's just where I am with the MCU. Is I, I don't care anymore. I still yeah. haven't watched Thor yeah. yet. And that's weird for me because I want to, I want to watch Love and Thunder. I was going to see it in theaters, but my weekends were just crazy during the time. And then I didn't, and then it was like, oh, they're going to put in Disney plus next month. I'm like, well, in that case, I'm just not going to, I'm not going to go pay to go see it. 
Yeah. I'm already paying, so I'll just wait. Oversaturation for you. That's what it does. You're like, I, I have time for all this. No, I mean, I it just was a bad. I mean, I would I would have thought a hundred percent. It was just a bad. It was just a bad couple weeks. Yeah, but the even movie. like you know, I think just a movie you're really wanting to see and it sucks. You know, there's that. But even when it comes to me, you're like, eh, I could go see it now. Probably. No, the only reason I haven't because I want to watch it with my wife, and then we just haven't had timing where she wanted mm-hmm. to watch a movie. But still, it's it's too much. Marvel got fucking shit. Oh no, I agree. It, there's yeah. been like we we were covering a bunch of it, and I have not really dive back into covering stuff with phase four i just partly i got burned out because i covered everything and i was like fuck we we all all three of us did yeah but no like this is i think an example i was talking about where i like hearing people talk about star wars i like hearing people talk about marvel so because i fell off at ant-man well, I, fun fact i liked ant-man but after that i was like i just don't I got, really a, I got a podcast for you that has a whole series on it <laughs> if you want to hear that but I do, especially as someone else who likes Ant-Man, and I have been curious about this one because I know it's lighter, and I hear how it's making people salty, and that's always attractive. Oh, yeah. The fanboys hate it. And... Exactly. That gives me more <laughs> hope. I'm like, hmm. So, I mean, like, how's, you know, Michael, what do you like about it? What do you all like about it? Uh, like I said, it's just, it's fun. It's not like the world is ending, so Jen has to go out and beat the bad guys or whatever. It's just kind of not really slice of life, uh, kind of slice of life with superpowers and Okay. She's a fun character, and She-Hulk continues her fourth wall breaks, which are a lot of fun, Ooh, which we haven't really like seen in the MCU. No, we haven't yet. This is the no. first time. Dead, Deadpool coming soon, no BB? Oh, I'm so hyped uh-huh. for that. Uh, Deadpool uh, 3 yeah, that... won't be part of the MCU, though, I don't think. Exactly. Uh, he I... says in that, Ron Reynolds said in that little teaser that we're inter- trying to figure out how to introduce Deadpool into the MCU, so... Yeah, so instead, we're having we're bringing back Wolverine is kind of yeah. what I heard it is. Yeah. My um, guess is something's going to happen at the end of the movie where he'll then he'll be dropped into the MCU. Kind of like how probably Venom was referenced Venom. at the very yeah. least. Like, I think the minimum Venom was like, oh, yeah, he was there in the universe in the same. But then he dipped. He did. That's so uh, fucking lazy. I, he was I, supposed I, to be in No Way Home. They filmed it, but then it got cut. Yeah, I'm not. But he was filmed to be in No Way Home for an actual scene. From what my understanding was, but I think it has. I'm assuming there was something to do with contracts and Sony, and so yep. they were like, "Nope, uh, we're not doing that." What it all boils down to, uh, it, I think it's terrible. It's one, one of the worst, and I'm sure they were. I'm sure someone at Disney gets pissed off every every, every day that they don't have the rights to Spider Man. Oh yeah, uh, uh, I think the one last big question I want to ask about Shield that I hear a lot of discourse on. I I think I know the answer. Just want to check. How do you feel about Smart Hulk? I'm I've never been a fan. Oh, okay, that's fair. I respect it. My main problem with Endgame and the Hulk is they kind of set up at the beginning of Infinity War that he and Thanos are going to have this big thing and then just nothing comes of it. Or a small and, fight, but that's it. Yes, but Hulk's like afraid to emerge because Thanos kicked his ass. And and then in Endgame, it's just Professor Hulk. And like, he was supposed to be in Infinity War in the early trailers. He's running with them instead of Hulkbuster. And there's a Funko Pop of uh-huh. Hulk busting yeah. out, which I wish I would have bought. So, I mean, they had it was planned and then something happened and they just cut it all. They they recently showed, I think it was some scene where it's him and the Hulk like debating or something. I don't know. I thought it was really cool. I I think the the idea of those characters are really interesting to be like. And they've done a lot of really cool stuff in comics. Um, I've always kind of like Smart Hulk from afar. I think it's kind of fun, but I understand the sort of letdowns why it's disappointing, but I am excited to see more of him in She-Hulk if I do end up watching it. Is he in a bunch of it, or just like one or two episodes? He's prominently in the first episode, and then he's kind of makes appearances in a, a couple other ones. Okay. There are lots of guest stars in that. I also don't hate Ruffalo. I feel like Ruffalo gets a lot of hate. I've always kind of fucked good actor. I, li- I like Ruffalo. Yeah. I do, too. Yeah, he was I a think. good choice for her Banner. I kind of wish they just separated Hulk and Banner and just made them two different characters. But then yeah, but then, then they just kill Ruffalo because no one likes Ruffalo. I feel like <laughs> they'd be like, "Cool, we got the whole Good night, Ruffalo. Fuck off, Banner. No one cares about you. Oh. <laughs> you don't need Hawkeye too, but even less powers." <laughs> the damn. <laughs> you upset Mike with that talk. Uh, I do, the Hawkeye no. show is good though, man. Yeah, I just, no, I, I like Hawkeye. I just feel like you know, if Hawkeye gets the crash he gets nowadays, justly or unjustly, but then you have someone else who doesn't even have that, and, like, and they already have smart dude Tony. It's like, why would you have Banner around? Hey, not Ooh. anymore. Oh, you're right. <laughs> I hope days. he never comes back either. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't. I feel like I feel like they had this really good idea of really passing it on, and I think they need to do that. And if they don't stick to it hard it's gonna be even stupider and it'll just be another bad step of like no we gotta move on you gotta let these people go they don't want to do these movies forever 
Look at Harrison Ford. <laughs> That's that Marvel oversaturation. One character is just Tony Stark is in fucking everything. Uh, he's dead. I'm so glad. <sighs> I, did. I never. Oh, I'm going to be upset if I ever see a hologram of Robert Downey Jr. in these movies. I'm going to be very upset. It was just a hologram. It was like a, hey, I'm dead. See you. <laughs> no, I'm worried that there'll be a hologram of him where he has roles again. Mm. So I'll be upset because, like, just be done with him. I, I don't want, I don't need to see Robert Downey Jr. again in anything. So I'm good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's all enough. All right, I think that's everything that we <laughs> wanted to cover for this, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. All right. And Star, where can people find you at? Mentioned it at the start of it again. Uh, I'm on Twitch, kind of getting there. I'm resetting up a space. So it'll be like my room so I can do it more often rather than a shared bedroom. So hopefully there soon, TM. All right. And if you enjoyed this episode, we do one of the What Are Your Plans every month. Listen in, see what we were up to that month and what we've been playing and random stuff that we say and what we've been doing. So go check those out. And there's over 390 other episodes you listen to of this podcast. If you can't find what you're looking for on Spotify or iTunes, everything is on Podbean. So go there. Also, we mentioned earlier at some point throughout this episode, we have a Discord. You can go join our Discord. You'll see a link in the show notes, the invite to join. You can talk with us. We're all, all three of us are on there and so are a bunch of other people. So definitely go join that. And I, I post the bingo card yes. so I wouldn't forget. So it's already on there. <laughs> okay. And we do have a Patreon. So if you want to support the show, it's a little as a dollar. We do have a Patreon poll going right now. By the time you hear this, you have a lot of. A little bit of time still to vote. It's Resident Evil Infinite Darkness, Resident Evil Netflix show, Resident Evil Extinction, and yeah. Resident Evil Damn Damnation. You get to choose which one we're going to make, cover. Make Mike yeah. suffer. Vote for the Netflix show. It's tied right they're now. All, with they're Extinction. all suffering, if you ask me. They're all bad. Oh, I enjoy... Well, the movie I need to watch because I need to get to the rest of the movies. So... <laughs> but the show was not one I want. I didn't think it was going to, but it might, it, I think people are going to make us watch it. So I, I already got one that. sucker. I told that I'm going to be volunteering to join me. So. I always appreciate that reminder. Cause I, I do space a little, cause I know it's never on Patreon, but I did just go on. And now, uh, by 15% of the TV series is ahead. There you go, Mike. Oh. <laughs> just cause I, if you're going to suffer, you should suffer. And, uh, cause I think uh, it's all. I'm busy that day, so <laughs> I know I, wasn't oh. I know you weren't going to go. How convenient. Oh, I, I, I'm out of town. I won't have uh, internet. Yep. Whatever day it is, I'm busy. <laughs> I'll find suckers. I always do. <laughs> All right. And want to give a shout out to my awesome intro and outro courtesy of Helena at Hell Has For You. You can follow her on TikTok. You'll see a link in the show notes. She made our music. And also want to give a shout out to my buddy Bill Tucker, who did the who one of the people who joined me for the MCU movie, started his own podcast, Gamer Looks at 40, where he interviews people how video games affect their lives. Definitely go check him out. Does a great show. And we follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and on YouTube. Audio only, but we're on YouTube. One day I'll do video. I keep telling myself that, but it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> I just don't care. I just don't want to start fucking around with editing audio, with editing video. That just seems like a whole other world that I don't want to enter. Yeah. You have to edit it? I mean, it feels like, like this. You just like just throw it up. And, uh, yeah, but then I, st- I, I haven't entered that world yet where I'm like going to, yeah, at some point. On my I, also, list. I also think sometimes we all maybe take small breaks. We need to like step away for a second and see very obvious. Like, well, I have to. I'll be right back. I'm not. I'm not prevalent to this movie discussion. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> got to keep the the curtain a little close. I, it wouldn't work. Just I just haven't got it. One day I keep telling myself one day. All right. So definitely go check out everything that we do. And I think that's everything I need to say. So we will see you guys next time. Bye everybody. Bye bye.